So my uh, talk is about uh, no raw loops with no OS. Um, and I think a uh, few introductions are in order. My name is uh, Paul Bendixson. I am a Bachelor of uh, Electronics Engineering. And I have a master's in technical ICT. And I am currently a software pilot uh, at Trifork. And I've been a member of uh, SG14 almost since the beginning. Uh, as a newly uh, new out of college uh, electronics engineer, I of course knew that the only way to code uh, any decent uh, microcontroller was using uh, pure C. And uh, when I got out into industry and saw how electronic engineers uh, use C for the coding, I knew that I had to do something. Uh, to make it more readable and to make it more maintainable. And uh, SG14 seemed like the right place at the right time for that. So what do we mean with maintainable and readable C++? Uh, well, mostly modern C++. And for me, one of the big things that is modern C++ uh, got started by Sean Parent in his C++ seasoning talk. If you haven't already seen this talk, I would highly recommend that you go watch it. It's on YouTube. It's uh, a couple of years old uh, right now, by now, but it is a fantastic talk and it uh, really uh, gives us a lot um, also today. So this is uh, one of the um, defining moments of that talk where he exclamates that this is obviously a rotate. Uh, and the code that went before this was, well, at least to me at the point, uh, it was not obvious that it was a rotate. Um, but the whole point of the, uh, the talk is to don't use raw loops, use the algorithms that are available, because that makes it a lot easier for people to uh, know what it is that your program is doing. Uh, what is even more impressing uh, in the talk is this little thing, where he takes literally uh, five slides or the like and compresses it down to two calls to stable partition. This uh, code uses um, concepts. Uh, which, of course, Sean didn't have back in 2013 uh, when he presented, but that we do have now, um, that we are in 2020. Um, and this kind of kick-started a lot of different uh, people going the same route, uh, taking a, into consideration how do we make more readable code by using the STL. Uh, one of the people who uh, did this is Jonathan Bukhara. And um, his uh, talks about uh, doing and uh, knowing the 105 uh, standard algorithms um, goes a long way to do that. He also has this very nice map that uh, shows you where on where in the world of STL algorithms, uh, the different algorithms live and how they are grouped together. Uh, you can go get a version that you can actually uh, take <laughs> take a look at at the Fluent CPP, uh, which I would uh, recommend that you do. But it's one more step in the process of making sure that modern C++ uses the modern uh, STL algorithms and the modern SDL uh, for that matter. And after that, uh, and along with uh, Jonathan, a lot of people have come. And I'm going to end this uh, with uh, one particular person, not because he's last, I hope, but because he sums it up very well in his uh, algorithm intuition talks, a couple of those floating around on the internet as well, um, where we get to, taking from one of his slides, a sorted squares. Now, taking this and using ranges and working with the STL algorithms makes 
this code very readable, uh, perhaps more readable than uh, what would be done uh, in the, in a more, let's say, uh, EE-oriented uh, approach to writing code. So let's all just uh, use the SDL, and uh, there will be no problems. Well, not necessarily, because uh, we in the embedded field are, of course, special snowflakes, just like everyone else, and we can't use all the nice things. For example, a lot of uh, embedded projects don't allow usage of the heap. And the reason for this is, of course, uh, amongst others, fragmentation of the memory that we have finite memory to deal with. We can't just assume that the system that we are on will have enough memory. Uh, and of course, the non-determinism uh, non -determinism of uh, allocating memory. Uh, if we are in a real time or just a very constrained uh, environment, this can really hinder um, our program's correctness uh, if suddenly we need to go off and allocate some more memory. Another thing that's often ex uh, taken out is the exceptions. And mm, there are a few reasons for this, but mainly it comes back to the heap um, and non-determinism and fragmentation. And let's not repeat ourselves. And uh, finally, a third thing that is luckily getting less and less um, common that uh, to have as a problem is floating point. But there are still some problems regarding floating points. Uh, for example, if you're on a small enough machine, you might not have the FPU, which leads to large uh, library implementations. And if you don't have an FPU, it's probably because a floating point unit, uh, so uh, dedicated hardware. Uh, if you don't have an FPU, it's probably because you don't have enough uh, flash and memory as it is, and then large library implementations aren't going to help you. Uh, that's also the thing that we might be doing our own OS um, in some of these. And in that case, touching the floating point registers um, might hinder user space if we are writing the kernel space uh, in working correctly and make some very interesting bugs. But there is a way out. So if we go to the standard, the, I don't know how many of you know what freestanding is, but the free stand, uh, but in the standard there are, is a uh, paragraph called uh, linked to in, here in the bottom uh, called compliance that declares that there are two types of implementations for the uh, standard: a hosted and a freestanding implementation. And for the hosted implementation, everything that is in the standard must be in the hosted implementation. For the freestanding uh, implementation, the parts here in table 24, it jumps around as the uh, standard gets upgraded, uh, are the things that are in here. And as you can see, we have uh, stuff that we really like and love, like dynamic memory management and exception handling. Um, but we also have some uh, quite nice uh, things in here uh, for use in the uh, embedded domain, such as the concepts and the type traits, um, the bit. Um, and of course, the uh, standard is the C standard library. Now, this doesn't get us very far in using the STL because if we can only use these parts, well, there's some bit manipulations, but it doesn't really give us all the nice algorithms that uh, Sean and the others are talking about. So, there is a proposal. Actually, there are by now quite a few. Uh, the PO829 by Ben Craig uh, was proposed uh, 
in order to add everything to the freestanding implementation that can be used without an OS call and without space overhead. Uh, Ben's primary goal for this is for working in the uh, Windows kernel, as far as I recall, but this is exactly what we would like to have in the uh, embedded space as well. Now he goes on to motivate this. Um, I would uh, recommend that you go watch his uh, uh, talk from Embo in uh, 2018. Uh, I was there and that's where I got uh, inspired. But the motivation of the entire system is, uh, of the entire proposal is that system programmers don't have a guide as to what C++ libraries will work for them. Um, so it should be such that a freestanding implementation would provide clarity and help for programmers. Currently, uh, the proposal initially wasn't uh, too well received. Uh, a report of go back and fix some things <laughs> was given, and it's currently being chopped into smaller, more easy to uh, pass proposals. Uh, currently, there are these two uh, proposals regarding the library, and there are more to come. Along with the uh, other proposal, Ben Craig and Ben Sachs also has uh, another proposal that would make exceptions, RTTI, default heap, thread local storage, floating point, and uh, other st uh, stuff that we don't usually need in the kernel and or embedded spaces uh, to make that optional. Um, and of course, if you follow, the standardization process, you'll uh, know that everything has turned into molasses right now. It seems to be uh, that we are going to wait quite a bit for that. So what is actually the entire thing that can be uh, implemented in a OS-less uh, system without uh, memory overhead? Well, there are uh, these um, this set of libraries um, that has been pulled out. Um, the complete libraries are the libraries that are just going in wholesale. Uh, so the entirety of uh, span and uh, all of these uh, niceties uh, can just go directly in. Um, uh, concepts used to be on that list but now they're on the actual uh, freestanding list. So that at least uh, did get through. The partial libraries are a little more involved. So for example, you'll see uh, a library in there like a string. Normally we wouldn't connect string with embedded systems. And it turns out that there is almost nothing left of string uh, but there are some string related header uh, constants that are needed, uh, some structs uh, that makes it so that string must be there, but we pull almost everything out. To go into a bit of detail in a, a one or two of them, um, we get, for example, most of functional, except for polymorphic uh, function wrappers. So std function and friends because uh, std function will in some cases allocate uh, on the heap and we don't want to use the heap. Uh, Boyer Moore searcher and Boyer Moore horse pool searcher has a lot of a lot to do with the uh, string um, library and so let's not go there. But perhaps for the um, for the ideas of uh, Sean Parent and others, most of the algorithm and numeric headers are included. The execution policy, so that is the parallel uh, algorithms, will not be included, and the following uh, things will be omitted uh, because uh, of the use of temporary buffers. And that includes stable sort, stable partition, and in-place merge. So out of the 105 plus um, 
libraries in algorithm and numeric, we now get almost all of them except these three. Of course, stable partition is in there, but uh, that is a, uh, something we'll revisit in a bit. So I got very excited when I first saw uh, Ben Craig's talk. And I went up to him after the talk and I asked him, so where is the implementation? And he said, well, there really isn't one. Uh, I've most, mostly been doing around with uh, compiler flags in MSVC and I couldn't really use that. And the thing is, I kind of needed it for my own pet projects uh, using primarily the AVR processor families family. Uh, the AVR processor is an 8-bit microcontro microcontroller. It has a huge family variation. There are a lot of these. They've been going on for forever. Uh, they are at the heart of every Arduino, of, or at least they used to be the heart of every Arduino. They are still in a lot of Arduinos. So there's a lot of cheap, cheap, cheap hardware that's very easy to get a hold on and very easy to start working on. It uses a GCC compiler and there is no C++ standard library whatsoever in any of the regular uh, distributions that you will get of the GCC compiler. You have to compile it yourself. So getting a standard library uh, using the freestanding uh, proposal seemed like an, a great idea. So I decided to start hacking the GCC. And uh, this is uh, the rules that I came up with. Um, the C library part is left alone apart from undefines. Uh, there are some undefines in there already. Uh, and the AVR GCC, uh, the AVR C library is in another uh, library all to itself. So by restricting myself from doing uh, going there, I only have to fiddle with one library. The only change that will be made in the code is uh, commenting out or if deffing out, which is how GCC already used uh, uh, to discuss, uh, distinguish between a hosted and a freestanding environment. This is uh, built on the idea that the STL is built by people a lot more knowledgeable than me and tested and reviewed by a lot more people than I can ever get to. So by just uh, modifying um, what gets in and not modifying what is actually uh, written there, I can make uh, pretty sure that I don't have to make whole new test suites and make sure that everything works. And finally, I want the implementation to be as faithful as possible. So for example, everything that uses Erno, uh, which is a, a global variable, uh, we don't usually feel too bad about using global variables in the embedded space, but it's uh, the parts using Erno is, uh, are left out of the proposal. Uh, so even though it would be easy enough for me to just slip it in, and the standard says that uh, these are at least the headers that must be defined for anything to be classified as freestanding. Uh, I want it to be as faithful as possible also so that we can actually see whether or not we are getting uh, the full um, the full experience or if uh, anything else is needed. So what does this give us? Well, we can actually now use modern C++ std array, type safe arrays, uh, and taking advantage of all of the uh, regular things that we have, uh, we <laughs> hear about at uh, conferences. So doing a nice, normal compilation of this program, it works. So slide now compiles. Gather does not. But it does give an error that stable partition cannot be found. And this is exactly what we needed. 
in the places where there is a an uh, a hole and a mission because of uh, requirements that we perhaps did not know. I mean, who of you <laughs> have ever thought about stable partition being something that might allocate? Um, this gives the programmer the tools needed to be able to take the um, to take the library and use it and be stopped whenever uh, they uh, get into anything that is not uh, okay for the criteria that has been set up. So I uh, I would like to thank Miss um, uh, Kay for uh, the idea. Uh, she did a talk at EMBO uh, a couple of years ago um, where she uh, had a slide containing all of the th steps needed to use, uh, um, at that time it was Clang with the AVR, and that turned out to be immensely useful. So I decided to make my own case slide. Uh, case slide. Uh, so first we build the bin utils, and then we build GCC, and then we build the libc, and that will allow us to uh, build the freestanding library. So that's how you get it. There, uh, The code is online, and you just go and download it, and then you go through these steps. It's not that hard. Um, well, of course, this is uh, 2020, so uh, nobody wants to compile anything anymore. Let's containerize this. Uh, and I would like to extend my thanks, my warmest thanks, to Krusty Auklet uh, from the uh, CPP Lang Slack, who took my um, my Docker files and uh, decided to maintain them using an Ubuntu version of uh, Docker, so that um, whenever you pull these uh, these uh, Docker files you will have a complete AVR with libs, uh, STD C++ uh, according to the freestanding library. Um, and we are uh, currently at 10.1, uh, and I uh, hope to upgrade as, uh, and keep it up to date as long as I can. Uh, talking about discontinuing the AVR support in GCC, but let's... Uh, Let's wait for it to actually happen. So you can just pull your Docker container and use that. Of course, this is, uh, if we really think about it, the entire uh, freestanding library is actually just a uh, header-only uh, library. So it's just a library. Why not use Conan? And uh, you need to set up my uh, personal bin tray uh, to be able to pull the Conan, uh, Conan 10.0. I'm sorry, it hasn't been updated to the latest version. Uh, but that will allow you to do a uh, Conan install and use this in your own projects. What this gives us, because it is a header-only library, this also allows you to uh, run uh, the libraries originally intended only for AVR on your ARM. So I actually have, as part of my uh, Conan build instructions, a, a Conan test that makes sure that it uh, runs, uh, it will include each and every of the files um, that are defined in the uh, freestanding library also com uh, compiled using GCC uh, ARM, no AIB. Um So yes, this will also allow you to use uh, the freestanding library for ARM. So go use that if you're not interested in using the AVR. If you want to know more, there is the GitLab link, and uh, that contains the GCC fork 
uh, it contains uh, the Docker files and it contains the Conan recipes. And it also uh, contains a woefully incomplete version of a, a homepage describing more about uh, what uh, the freestanding library is and how to use it. So with that, I uh, would encourage you, as you saw, there is no uh, stable partition in the freestanding library. I would encourage you to do as Sean uh, instructed and create your own um, algorithms using the standard algorithms that are already there. So I'd love to see your take on how to do a stable partition using the freestanding library. Thank you.